This is Chris, right at Grow Arms. Guys, it's been a while since we got a chance to do a video, but we're trying to get back into the routine. Just been real busy with the upcoming election and everything going on. Today, we're going to do something that I've only been able to find maybe one other video of um, actually on the internet. And this is something a lot of you probably aren't going to have the opportunity to actually play with, but I thought it'd be cool to show you one of the tools. Um, I'm a big machine gun freak. Like I told you, we're a class three, class seven manufacturer as well. So we get to play with some fun guns. Uh, one of my favorite guns we own a couple of is, some, is the 1919 Browning belt fed machine gun. Um, some of you guys are familiar with it, some of you aren't. looks a lot like a Ma Deuce. Um, it runs on 30-06 or 308. All in, you can run metal links or, or cloth links. I prefer cloth because it doesn't tear up my gun as bad. Um, this is right here is an example. It's a link belt and cloth, 30-06. It's 200, roughly 230 rounds, basically. Um, this one's already been linked up. Now, you would think this is a painstaking process, typically, because you would be... This is linked up 30-06. You would think this is a typically a painstaking process to sit here and put all these rounds in, and if you don't have the proper tools, it is. Um, what's really cool is in 1918, John Browning designed a belt loader um, to load these cloth belts with. Um, they work great, and what we're going to show you today is actually one of those original belt loaders um, and how they work. This is your cloth belt unlinked, what it starts off as. They either have metal or brass ends. Uh, these were manufactured all the way up to the late 80s. Uh, we still use 1919s today in our military. Um, again, the ones I run are 30 out 6. Here's the original box that the tool itself would come in. It's going to have the flaming bomb from Springfield Armory on it. It's crest, it's a part number. You open it up. Pretty simple, just a wooden box. Um, I've already taken the tool out, got it set up and bolted to a wooden crate of mine. Um, I don't have the best facility here for doing this right at this moment. We're actually standing in my reloading center, but it's a mess. Um, just due to us being busy, we need to clean it. Um, again, you got this is Bolt 1968 30 6 nasty ammunition. Sorry about my phone going off. Uh, this is the actual tool itself, the way it works. You have a trough similar to what it looked like on a Gatling gun. The trough on the top, you drop your, you drop your ammo in. This is the only slow part about the whole thing is dropping your bullets down and having to continually refeed this. Once this is set up, we're going to go through putting a belt in it here in a second. You've got a needle arm, guides the tip of the bullet down into the cloth. you got a roller on the top and the bottom. It's a mechanical device. Picks the bullet out, shoves the bullet in, and starts rolling them through the cloth. It's easy to set up, but can be distracting at some times too. On top of the machine, you'll just see Browning belt filling machine, model of 1918. It's kind of cool if you guys think this was built that long ago and the thing still operates today great. Um, these are pretty hard to find and they're getting more and har harder and harder to find. The way they work is you got a trough here on the top that will actually disconnect from the machine and it's just a piece of metal sticks in the top and you singly or take handfuls at a time load your 30 out 6 this will also do 308 and 8 millimeter um, you got to change the push arm for 8 millimeter and 308 but the same machine will load either um, you've got a little plate here a needle arm to help line the cartridges a metal roller that's actually going to feed through the belts this little arm here is going to jump in and out and what it's going to do is actually push the round into the belt um, it's easier to show than it is to explain and I'm not a mechanical genius that invented it so what we're going to do now is grab a belt and feed a couple of rounds to it so you get an idea on how this thing actually operates. We're going to start with our typical 200 and something round belt. And these things are actually pretty cool when you start looking at them. They number 25. So as you're shooting or loading, you know that you're at 25, 50, 75, 100, and so on. Pretty self-explanatory. What I do is I'll throw the belt across the room. You have to manually load the first round, so you need to figure out which direction they go in. They always go in toward the stitched side, so this is going to be the large, or I'm sorry, I said that backwards, they're going to come in from the stitched side. Manually load your first round by just placing it through and pressing down. This takes quite a bit of pressure. This is why you wouldn't want to do this by hand. Get it till the neck is slightly sticking up. Now that you've hand loaded your first round, this belt's getting a little tattered and worn but it'll still work. You're going to come to the machine. You're going to stick the first one in the roller. Actually, I need to get a round drop down. You want to drop a round down and go toward the needle arm with it. Bring your cloth belt in. Put this round in the roller so that it knows where the alignment's at. Get your cloth belt down. Close with that. 
push this down you got a little arm that's going to hold up now that's holding that shell in place now the trick i've learned i'm sure i'm probably doing this wrong but what works best for me so i'll take another round i'll make sure that this round is lined up with the opening in the belt otherwise you'll get a misfeed then you want to put this arm needle arm down top of the round fill your trough up if you guys try this, it may take you a time or two to actually get it aligned and running right. Once you get it aligned and running right, it's so simple and it's just awesome to watch. We actually almost have more fun playing with this thing than we do the machine gun sometimes. Then you just want to, I don't think you have to, I keep a little tension on the other side of the belt. Grab your crank handle, make sure that first round's lining up like it should, which it's not. You get to see me fix a malfunction too. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, guys, I don't know how recommended this would actually be or how, what you would call this, but I'm gonna go ahead and manually start a lot of this on my own. Like I said, sometimes it's a little finicky to get it running like you want it. It could be because this belt's a little torn up. Let's see if this works. If not, we may have to try a different belt. Crank, there we go. Now that I'm low, again, just come in, get a handful of 30 out six. Fill my trough back up. You guys may think this is stupid, but if you get an opportunity to play with one of these things, it's just like being a little kid with a new erector set. And the best part is, if you guys own a belt fed machine gun, typically your friends come over, get excited to see this new toy, and they end up playing with it as well. So you get your belts loaded for you. We had the opportunity this past Saturday to go out and play at the range for a little bit. And burning through four belts with a thousand rounds, you're glad you have this tool. Right, you can go faster as long as you're confident you got it set up right. That's it. When the belt gets to the end, you'll run the last round through. Um, pull your belt out and do everything like you did or if you even want to stop in the middle you can it's no big deal if you notice these are all nice and evenly lined up packed in just like they should ready to feed through your machine gun guys again Chris right to their arms today is a little different I'm sure I don't know if any of you guys have actually seen one of these or not before but it's just a cool cool tool um, again I'm a belt fed freak before we close the video I'll walk out and we'll show you two of the belt feds I've got on display in the front room um, if you guys have any questions or cons concerns or comments or anything on this video, or again, I need more requests from you all as to what you would like to see.